Hey everyone, welcome back to the Crazy Dreamer Network. My name is AJ and let's hop right into today's reading. So today's reading is a pick a card about what lessons are you learning and overcoming right now, okay? So what lessons are you learning and overcoming right now? We have four piles, pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. Pile number one, we have card number 47, Grand Cross Provoker. <clears throat> pile number two, we have card number 49, Jupiter Return Benefits. Pile number three, we have card number 28, card number 28, Fourth House Roots. And last but most certainly not least, we have pile number four, card number 19, Libra Eye Balance. Okay, so we have pile number one, pile number two, pile number three, and pile number four. I love you all so much, my dreamy dreamers, and I'll see you in your readings. Bye. Hey, pile number ones, welcome back to your reading. So you all chose card number 47, Grand Cross Provoker, in regards to the lessons that you're currently learning and overcoming right now, okay? So um, with card number 47, four and seven is um, 11, okay? And that's a master number. So I feel like there's an initiation happening in your life right now, pile number ones, right? Um, I also feel as if, um, with Grand Cross Provoker, you're definitely at a crossroads and there are a lot of things that are happening for your benefit, but they're not automatically just going to be like smooth sailing, right? There's still effort that needs to be put in and there's still decisions that need to be made here. Okay. So, um, 11 might be a prominent number for you all. 11, 11 might be a prominent number for you all. You all could be seeing that uh, angel number or that master number a lot. Um, there's a sense of awakening to something here as well, but I do want to give you guys more understanding through the Black Moon Astrology guidebook. Okay, so give me one second. Let's read up a little bit on this grand cross provoker energy okay here we go so we have card number 47 grand cross provoker it says life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all Helen Keller. It says the Grand Cross is an area of tension in a chart, thus becoming a great catalyst for movement and change. A rare astrological configuration, the Grand Cross, also called the Grand Square, occurs when four planets form a perfect cross in the skies. These planets are around 90 degrees from each other, meaning there are four planetary squares 90 degrees apart and two planetary oppositions 180 degrees apart. Squares in the astrological chart cause tension and restriction. Oppositions as well are seldom soft aspects. They come with the pressure to grow and the will to exceed any limitations put in one's path. But the Grand Cross is the most rare and intense of all. It says in mythology, um, this alignment represents the four directions. The Grand Cross, also called the Cosmic Cross, is symbolic of the four seasons, equinoxes, and solstices, as well as the cross quarter days indicating a period of time when your life may seem to come at cross purposes. Usually when a grand cross occurs, it indicates a crisis, yet through this calamity will be the painful process of growth, then renewal, and eventually a greater foundation for happiness and success. Strangely, it is almost as if the planetary energies are in competition with each other. And I, I think this is interesting, pile number ones, because I feel like you all have already went through. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm getting the word hemorrhage, and it's not a literal hemorrhage. So please don't, you know, I need to choose my words more carefully but that that was the word that instantly came out like a hemorrhage in like a situation or something you guys are like coming out it's almost like how when women give birth and the crowning of a baby like i'm assuming that's like the worst part just because it's the crowning of the head that's coming out of the birth canal so that could be to me <laughs> in my opinion the most intense period of that process right 
that's what I'm getting. You're in like this crowning stage, like where you're about to just be born out into the world and like have literally gone through this as a catalyst to yes, your growth, but also your success as it, as it states here in this book. Okay. So I want to read a little more. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I want to read this part just because it's it's giving what we need to have been given, okay? So it says, um, when this card presents itself in a reading, it suggests there are multiple talents you are able to access as well as numerous paths you can take. Focus and organization are key. This is what you guys need to be hearing right now. This is the Take notes, you know, if, if that makes any sense. So it says, when this card presents itself in a reading, it suggests that it is it suggests that there are multiple talents you are able to access, as well as numerous paths you can take. Focus and organization are key. Until this matter phases out, expect resistance, since opposition is the main energy field of the Grand Cross. Once on track, the momentum towards the attainment of what you desire will be impossible to stop. OK, hear me out here. It says once on track, the momentum towards the attainment of what you desire will be impossible to stop. And this is where I feel like you all are at. Right. Like especially as it pertains to what you're overcoming now, you're you're at this crowning moment of that cross. Right. Of that, like I could go in either which way. And I feel like a lot of you are multi hyphenate if that makes sense. You're multifaceted and you are able to use all talents that you have and almost like use it as an umbrella to create the life, the business, the career, the the overall success uh, and, and self-expression uh, that we're here to embody as humans. You're all, you're able to as it says, Grand Cross, use those talents uh, and, and, and like I said, create that umbrella effect and, and use it in all areas of your life and compound on on those uh, the purposes that are within you, if that makes any sense. But yeah, it says it mainly has to do with shifting of energy and switching into gears. OK. That's so interesting. It says, what is positive about the Grand Cross is you are becoming more realistic and focused. I feel that, y'all. You won't be attracted to much, so much by glitz and glitter, but looking more towards stability and long-lasting success. A good thing to remember is that it's best not to fight the hard lessons at this time. In fact, this is a period where you need to take stock of all that has brought you to this place. It is time to draw upon your own strength. In doing so, you will move from uncertainty into a place place of peace and contentment. This is where y'all are headed. This is very interesting. Or this is where y'all are at now. And then it's, you're still working towards that. But that's very interesting, Paul, number one. Um, but yeah, I digress. Let's proceed with your reading. We have at the bottom of the deck, the Six of Wands victory, okay? And what I'm getting with this card is you're almost there. The Grand Cross Provoker card, uh, the corresponding card to this in this guidebook is the Nine of Wands. So keep going. Don't dare give up. You're almost there. You're almost to this victory that you're seeking here, okay? Um, as it pertains to your goals, your dreams, your ambitions in life, pile number ones. But again, I proceed, let's, uh, you know, get into your reading. We have the star card here, the five of swords with defeat, the magician, the four of wands with completion, the queen of swords, prince of pentacles, the tower, ten of cups with satiety. We have five of wands with strife and the hermit card. So in the center of your reading with the magician and the ten of cups, you have manifested this period of your life and beyond that's coming in for you, pile number ones, okay? Uh, some of you all could be water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpios. You don't have to be at all, but, you know, the ten of cups, I believe, is the Pisces card, but I'm just stating that because it's water signs. You all could be Aries with the magician card here. 
Um, but yeah, like I was suggesting, you all have manifested this new chapter in your life that's going to be very abundant and rich in emotional fulfillment and what your heart truly desires. I have a feeling, you know, there's <clears throat> this time in your life is going to be a profound one because it's going to really embody who you have been striving to become, right? And who you have been wanting to become for a very long time. Pile number ones, okay? Um, so going back to the beginning of the reading, again, wish fulfillment is here with the star and the prince of pentacles. And I have a feeling like, the main indicator, knowing that your success is not just going to be very grand, but also uh, long lasting, is this Prince of Pentacles here with the star. It's almost like slow and steady wins the race, okay? And I feel like while it feels like this dream, this wish has taken forever to manifest, it's actually here in divine timing, right? I have a feeling maybe there has been a moment in the recent past where you've stopped to reflect on a lot of things. But if you can see here, this uh, person in this Prince of Pentacles cards is um, they have a globe in their hand. So I'm getting almost two worldwide recognition and success coming in for you very, very, very soon. Pile number one. And the lessons that you had to learn had to be endurance, right? That's the overall lesson, endurance, patience, right? Patience is a virtue. And I feel like maybe even certain times on this quest or whatever, you're like, I am being patient. I don't get what, what is the whole reiteration of this patience. I feel like I'm being patient, but I feel like it's, it's more so to sharpen and refine the feeling of patience, not being like, yes, maybe on the external, you might seem like, oh, I have it all figured out or, you know, I'm very patient. But on the internal, how are you feeling? What are the thoughts that you're thinking? That's really going to um, assure yourself how far you've come through your internal dialogue and your internal feeling state, right? Right. Because it takes a little time, not a lot of time, but a little time for us to manifest our internal on our external, right? Because we live on earth. So with the five of swords and defeat with defeat in the tower, I have a feeling whatever a, a, a specific lesson needed to be learned here uh, within all this being said with the five of swords, defeat in the tower is that, it, again, it coincides with that that resilience or that, um, gosh, what did I just say? I don't know if it was resilience. It was more so along the lines of, yeah, well, resilience. I'll just use that word with the five of swords defeat card and the tower. I have a feeling whatever you have been going through, you have literally been conquering each feat you know what I'm saying? Which is interesting. It says defeat, but you have been conquering each feat uh, along your quest and along your, your journey here, pile number ones, uh, you haven't really allowed that tower to come down because you've been handling yourself. I feel like you have established a lot of patience and grace and poise and you're winning. There's a winning at all cost air here, but to me, I'm not getting in a bad way. I'm just getting like you won't get the best of me type of air in your aura or your personality as of recently, okay? So with the four of wands completion and the five of wands strife, again, again, pile number one, we have, um, I feel like you've overcome a lot of difficulties and that's the lesson that needed to be learned here is your resilience, your perseverance through adversity. And it's making you more creative. It's making you more stronger, especially internally, which that's what I was trying to, I guess, uh, connect to. It was that internal strength that you have built up within yourself, right? 
or together with a person, you know, may, I, you know, what's interesting. I'm feeling like there has been a sparring between the masculine and the feminine principle within you. And now it's, it's also being integrated, right? Because look, we have these three cards are the only cards other than the 10 of cups that have two people in them and they, they're representing masculine and feminine energies. This one, I think is two masculines, but that doesn't matter. This is just what I'm getting. And in relation to that, I have a feeling that you have really been sparring with the duality of yourself and you have now integrated it. You've made friends with it. You've made love with it. You know what I'm saying? You made up with it and now it's working for you and not against you right here with this four of wands. It's working for you and not against you. And that was a major lesson that you had to learn was that, you know what? No matter what happens in my life, there is no other option but for me to keep going. Like, what's the option? What's the alternative, you know? And I, that I, that's just what I'm getting with um, this reading, pile number ones, is that you guys have conquered or you're conquering your fears by just delving straight into them, right? With the Queen of Swords and the Hermit, yeah, you're becoming this really, I always say with the Queen of Swords, a shrewd business person, but you've also become so authentically you or becoming so authentically you by going on an internal quest, by really using the wisdom that you feel endowed with as of lately um, with this hermit card and really saying, you know what? I'm me. I'm not afraid to be me. I'm not afraid to be who I am. I'm not afraid to be ambitious or opinionated when the timing's right or even soft and demure and caring and nurturing. I'm multifaceted and I have a feeling you've gotten to know yourself through through this internal quest that you are on, okay? Pile number ones with the Queen of Swords and the Hermit energy here. So much so now you feel comfortable enough to take off those masks, to take off, you know, um, anything that's not serving you of your highest good that maybe you have been using as a shield, right? As a mask, as a coping mechanism. And you're you're implementing better, better, styles of coping for yourself and able to uh, ensure long-term growth not just within you but in your in your business or in um just you being more in i guess just you being more in the present moment pile number ones okay but there's definitely major shifts happening here life-changing shifts happening here a beautiful chapter emerging in your life to the point where there's just going to be a lot of gratitude and gracefulness and poise for for a while okay here we literally have what one two three four major arcanas the star the magician the tower and the hermit so i have a feeling there's going to be a lot of introspection a lot of revelations coming in on how to win and how to achieve your dreams and to um, manifest the life that you desire, okay? So let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for giving Paul number one clear, concise, accurate messages in regards to what lessons are they learning and overcoming right now, Spirit. Okay, yeah, we have card number 20, truth. This is a judgment card. So I feel like you're just opening yourself up more. You're you're claiming yourself and your truth, you know, and who you are. Okay. And again, even with this tower card, this tower card here, I'm getting more of an awakening spirit than like, you know, the the opposite of that. Tell me more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number ones. What lessons are they currently learning and overcoming right now, spirit? What lessons are they coming? Okay, so we have card number three, solar plexus chakra. Yeah, you're finding your power, you're finding your strength, you're finding your confidence. Okay, and that's the truth. Card number two, intuition. Again, very interesting. We have card number two, the waiting game. 
in reverse, the wait is over. This is who you are. You're coming into totality. You're merging the masculine and the feminine, and you're coming more fluid in your approach. You're trusting yourself. That's the truth. Your power lies in your intuitive abilities, pile number one. And not just in your not just in those intuitive abilities, but you need, I feel like God Spirit Source Energy is telling you start trusting yourself more because you're right on target. And what trusting yourself implies and includes is doing what you say you're gonna do when you say you're gonna do it for you, right? For you. That's it. You see how even both of these people in these cards are going into the unknown in different ways. They're going into the unknown through their mind and they're physically trying to get there. You know what I'm saying? Through this portal. That's both are portals, right? It's almost like this person was trying to open this door of opportunity first through their mind and then it, boom, it's open now. It's open. There's not even a door here. It's just wide open. It's a portal. So your power lies in the strength of your intuition and your intuitive faculty and uh, just trusting that. And you're going to know the difference, right? You're going to know the difference. The difference between intuition and anxiety is stark. Anxiety comes in fear. You start to feel a panic and a worry. But intuition is like this. It's 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 solid and it's grounded and it's just like a mm, okay okay you know this is what I need to do. I, I'm 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 certain of it. I know it. It's just doing it right. It's just going about the business of doing it. So let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. For giving call number one clear, concise, accurate messages. Okay. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our call number ones. What else do they need to learn about the lessons that they are learning and overcoming right now, spirit? Believe in yourself too with this card number three solar plexus chakra. Believe in yourself. And you're learning to believe in yourself more and more and more. And that's trusting your intuition. Okay. So we have Ogham Nature. Let's put that right there. Tell us more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages. What lessons is pile number one currently learning and overcoming right now? We have tarot guidance. What uh, lessons are our pile number ones currently learning and overcoming right now? We have arrow focus. Beautiful. Bottom of the deck, I Ching change. So there's a lot of change. And I feel like what I'm getting is like there's room for growth and there's room for development here. With Ogham Nature, you probably need to get more into in touch with the natural elements in life, right? Also here with tarot guidance, <clears throat> what I'm getting is that you're being led to something, right? This could be through a reading like this. This could be through personal readings or tarot readings. If you guys own have your own tarot decks, you could, you know, pull cards for yourself. But this is almost like a guiding post, right? Even this reading in and of itself. That's why I was like telling you guys, like even take notes with these readings because that helps. Like I know for sure I watch a lot of online pick a card readings and even like, because I'm a double Pisces, I'm a Pisces sun and a Pisces moon, I'll watch like a lot of Pisces reading and they're pretty accurate, particularly as it pertains to the major arcanas. Like, um, yeah, as it pertains to the major arcanas, like usually one, when one comes up or a few come up, they'll come up consistently no matter what readings that I'm listening to, even the ones that I'm doing with myself. So what I'm getting is that pay attention, pay attention um, to what that, to the guidance that you're currently getting from specific readings and focus your energy on the implementation to attain this uh, six of wands, to attain this victory, because it's coming in for you regardless. It's just there could be more smooth sailing in how it comes in, right? Uh, I hope that makes sense, y'all. <laughs> okay, so I do want to 
end your reading with some advice. Okay, I'm trying to see if I want to pick another card. Let's do the Moonology deck to end off your reading with some advice. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck, for giving pile number one's clear, concise, accurate messages, clear, concise advice, guidance, and wisdom to conclude their reading spirit. Clear, concise advice, guidance, and wisdom to conclude pile number not pile number one's reading. What lessons are what advice, guidance, and wisdom would you want to give pile number ones in regards to this lesson? Okay, so this card is like this card flipped out, so I'm just gonna take it. A new start is coming, new moon, boom. Okay, so I want to read that to you guys. We have your commitment is being tested, first quarter moon at the bottom of the deck. So give me one second. This moonology deck is so on point. Okay, so 24. Okay, here we go. So it says a new start is coming new moon there is a yes coming your way this is one of the most auspicious cards in the deck it's totally positive and suggests something new and exciting is developing the situation you're asking about is blessed and you are on target to achieving your goals the message from the universe is that you're starting all over again in some way be that on a new or better course or just feeling more positive about achieving your desired outcome if you've been feeling stagnant this card reminds you that life goes in cycles and you're moving in a new cycle now this is the time to wipe the slate clean <clears throat> if the situation you asked about has become toxic either that will clear up now or something totally new and fresh is on its way it says i see i'll see it when i believe it uh sorry i'm i'm excited for y'all and i'm going a mile a minute so give me a second it says attuned to the moon i'll see it when I believe it, this is literally the embodiment. Sorry, y'all, I have to show you of this card. I'll see it when I believe it. You remember what I was saying? This person is you is like using the portal of their mind to eliminate this door, right? To open it. Boom. It's open. You see, they're trying to see into here, but it's closed. So they're using the portal of their mind to see it through there, right? And now the door is gone. Ooh, child, this is deep. So you guys have literally used your mindset to make manifest your, your dreams and your desires and they're coming. You're so focused right now, right? Look how focused this person is. Their eyes are closed. That's very amazing, pile number, <laughs> pile number ones. Okay, so it says, I'll see it when I believe it. It says additional meanings for this card and new start is on its way. You will soon start to feel more hopeful about what you want. Your belief that your dreams can manifest is working well. Forget about the past. Beautiful. It says the new moon marks the start of the waxing cycle and the midpoint of the dark moon. It's a dark and veiled time when the moon is invisible and a time of rebirth. It's a time that witches do their work, making wishes and laying down intentions for the new cycle, an intensely magical time when it's easier to pierce the veil to the other worlds. Oh my gosh, such a gorgeous reading. Pile number one. With that being said, my pile number ones, congratulations. I feel like you've learned this lesson. You, you're triumphing over it and you're just continuing to refine that vision and, and, and you're this, this, <laughs> almost there. You're this close, okay? Keep going. This card is one of the best cards in the Moonology deck, and I'm so proud of you guys for achieving this beautiful feat. Um, with that being said, pile number ones, I love you so much. If you like this reading, if it resonated with you, please give this reading a big thumbs up. Like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone else who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreaming dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in our next readings. Bye. Hey, pile number twos. Welcome back to your reading. So you all chose card number 49, Jupiter Return Benefits. So... As it pertains to what lessons you're learning and overcoming right now, card number 49, 4 and 9 is 13, 3 and 1 
is for. So I have a feeling you're you're learning about stability and um, how amazing it can be for your life, right? I feel like you're learning about a sense of freedom. You're learning about a sense of balance right now as it pertains to the number four as well, numerologically speaking. And especially with Jupiter return benefits, it just seems like there is a easier time flowing in for you right now where a lot of obstacles are being lifted, where a lot of uh, opportunities are being granted to you right now. And I have a feeling this has something to do with another person as well, just because I don't know if you all can tell, but in this um, depiction of this Jupiter Returns card, there is like a masculine and a feminine here. Okay, so I do want to read to you, uh, to you all the meaning of this card just to give us more clarity. <clears throat> okay. So we have card number 49, Jupiter return benefits. It says luck is what happened when preparation meets opportunity. Okay. It says attribute it to Seneca. A Jupiter return occurs every 12 years. This marks the time the largest and most expansive of planets returns to the original place of when you were born. It says turning up the Jupiter return card indicates a period when doors are open to you and obstacles are lifted. You are given the freedom to advance your goals with absolute abandon. It suggests you will soon be entering a time where you enter encounter less resistance and life should flow much easier. The Jupiter return card is the green light that gives the go ahead. All paths are now clearing and you are able to take the utmost advantage of this. So that's really all that I wanted to read from this uh, guidebook, just because pal number twos, just looking at y'all's cards, they're so beautiful. And I feel like there is a, just this fresh, new, abundant, opulent chapter of your life that is commencing right now, okay? And it, it's something else. It is something else. There are some big dreamers out here watching this reading, and I'm so proud proud that you guys are even on this channel because it just means that there is an alignment happening here okay but I digress let's move forward with the reading we have at the bottom of the deck the magician you guys are master manifestors you all have learned the art of manifestation through your thoughts through you know your vibratory uh feeling states right you climbing up the, that uh, ladder of vibration and really just knowing that the world is your oyster. I feel like you could have also learned this through the philosopher's stone, which is the astrological will, right? With Which in essence is astrology. You all have learned a lot through the esoteric realms, the occult realms and things of that nature to bend reality to your will and the will of God, the, the, the will that... God has for you and yourself. You're a master manifester because you're masterfully gifted at co-creating with God, spirit, source, energy, the most higher, the, your higher self, whatever it is that you believe in. You're a masterful creator with your beliefs and your belief system. So just round of applause for that because that takes a lot of effort, commitment, diligence, and, um, really practice okay so just first and foremost you you should really be giving yourself a round of applause right uh but anyways i digress let's let's get into the reading we have the ten of pentacles with wealth first card coming out the deck like come on ten of pentacles of with the Ten of Pentacles with wealth, we have the Hanged Man, we have the High Priestess, we have the Princess of Swords, the Four of Wands with completion, we have the Will of Fortune, the Temperance card with art, we have the Five of Swords with defeat, we have the Sun, and we have the Justice card. We literally have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven major arcanas. There's so much momentum in your life. There's so much that you've triumphed over through wisdom, but also learning, right? Especially with this high priestess card here. She's reading an open book, right? So you're not only just, you're not resting on your laurels, pile number twos is what I'm getting. You're continuously learning every day and you're conjuring these 
these uh, the wisdom that was bestowed in a book or something from you know our ancestors or from the people you want to learn from. You're conjuring their wisdom. You're conjuring almost like their spirit in you know the most benevolent way to help and aid in your success or these future endeavors that you see yourself prospering in. Right. This is really profound and deep and beautiful uh, when you think about it. So again, we have seven major arcanas here in your reading, and these are pivotal life changing opportunities for you and beautiful ones at that. A lot of balance is, is being, uh, you know, given to you right now, especially with these major arcanas, a lot of balance, a lot of stability, a lot of perspective along the sides of those things, right? So going into the center of your reading with the High Priestess and the Five of Swords, you've learned to triumph over defeat through your mental faculty of intuition, of trusting your intuition and observing your opponent by being multiple steps ahead of your opponent. Even if that's your internal, those internal fears or those internal, um, that internal like critic, right? You're triumphing over that. And you, you have learned that pile number twos. You've learned to do that through wisdom is what I'm getting from that book, okay? And you're leaning not on your own understanding. You're leaning on, a, on, the, on, on the understanding of a higher level, of a higher plane. And to me, what I'm getting is you're the victor here. You're winning at all costs. You're subduing and you are obliterating, right? Uh, a lot of limiting beliefs, even if... Even to the untrained eye, it might not seem like it. You are demolishing any form of lack or limitation at this point. Even if it's happening at a slower pace than you'd like it, it's happening, okay? Your intuition is blaring. You are an oracle in and of yourself and you're a beautiful one. You're a goddess one. You emanate, you're a beautiful or a handsome oracle who emanates not only just in internal power, but it, it really does radiate and shine through you. Okay. With the 10 of pentacles and the will of fortune, my God, a, we have 10, 10 here. So there is a heightened sense of clairvoyance or just some type of clair in which you just have this fundamental knowing that something's going to happen. And I feel like you have really um, been blessed with your destiny and not only just blessed, but blessed with courage to partake in the beauty of your destiny, right? I feel like this also pertains to another person and something in regards to a family tree here, right? And the well-being and prosperity that um, can be brought into the family with wealth, with lineages of wealth, right? That's what I'm getting here. And you're manifesting this seamlessly. It's a part of your destiny. You're meant to manifest wealth in all areas of your life, pile number twos. With the hangman, and it's funny because we have the hangman and temperance, which is both signaling like a time of patience, but a time of surrender and a time of like, almost like a waiting period, right? And I feel like that waiting period is over. Um, but I have to state here, it's interesting because it's also like your ancestors are really talking to you. Oh, <laughs> number twos. Your ancestors are really talking to you. They want retribution. They want retribution. And they want so lightheartedly, right, is what I'm getting. These trees signify something here because look at this. This is almost like night and day. Look at how beautiful and lush. Well, granted, there's no leaves on this tree, but how it's still growing in the process with this roots and the, the, the bark and stuff like that. We have this tree here while the, the trunk is very big and there are, there are, there's greenery on this trunk. It seems almost like dilapidated, like it was 
trying to be cut down, okay? Like it was trying to be made smaller than it needs to be. You know, it wasn't, it was, the, it, its growth was stunted, right? It wasn't living up to its fullest potential. But it's almost like a semblance with this person hanging upside down on this tree. Like it's okay, because things will be made right. And there's no worries or concerns. This will be upright. This will be uh, vindicated. These people are, these happenings will be vindicated through, um, through this person of this family. Okay. Or something like that through the person who keeps holding on for dear life. Okay. They're going to find triumph and they're going to make manifest through art. They're literally mixing things into proportion and where it needs to be. And it's almost like you were chosen for this destiny, pile number twos. And I don't know. I don't. I feel like I. I don't really say that often in readings, but that's just what I'm getting from these cards. And it's funny how these this this car this pile is telling a, a very deep, profound story. This is above you, pile number twos. Okay. And I have a feeling you are just the one who has been like chosen in your family to go about it because you're so open and receptive to uh beings whether you see them or not whether you know that they're there or not to communicate to you through your intuitive faculty right with the princess of swords in the sun <clears throat> i feel like you're so curious about <sighs> this beauty of life you know, you're still like a child in a sense that you're ready to take action towards your happiness, towards your growth, towards the acceleration of your future, right? Maybe even along with someone else. There's a lot of collaborative energy here as well. And with the four wands completion and, and justice, I feel like there could be there could be marriage here, especially with the four of wands and justice. There could be like contractual like uh, happenings here that's going to solidify um, your stability. But also what I'm getting is that I just keep getting vindication. There's going to be that that thing made manifest through the collaboration of the masculine and the feminine principle. And I got that in pile one. So if you guys want to check out pile number ones uh, or, you know, was were torn between the two piles, I would definitely go do that. But there is this like completion here, this lightheartedness that's making you like, I don't know why I keep getting above reproach. I don't even know if that's the correct term to use, but it's like you're super saiyan, like this person is floating on air because they're so lighthearted. And then what, look, we see... We have the uh, yin yang symbol, and then we have the yin yang symbol here as well. You're really making magic. You're really stirring the pot in regards to what it is that you can make manifest on planet Earth now. And you're being given the green light to do so, pile number twos. You're like, God's like, we'll do it. <laughs> Don't talk about it, be about it. And I'm going to be there to help you all the way if this is what you're going to do. Okay? And I have a feeling you're like, bet. Like, let's do it. Let's go. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. What else does pile number twos need to learn? Uh, what other lessons are pile number twos learning and overcoming right now? What lessons are is pile number two learning and overcoming right now? Yeah. You're being endowed. You're learning your strength. You're learning how strong you are on an internal level. How much, how, 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 how you, how much you can keep going. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm getting. How much you can keep going, that inner resilience, that tiger, that fire in you, okay? That focus, that drive. You're learning about your internal power and your internal strength. Tell us more, God. What is our pile number twos? What lessons are pile number twos currently learning and overcoming right now? Clear, concise, accurate messages, spirit. 
What lessons are pile number two is currently learning and overcoming right now, spirit? Okay, so we have card number nine. Look, you can't make this up. Card number nine, spiritual strength. That's what you're learning. You're learning. If it gets too heavy for you, give it to the most high. Give it to God. Give it to spirit. Give it to something higher than yourself, and you will be able to triumph over anything because you're focused. Your mind's eye got you. You're focused. Keep the focus. We have card number five, emotional loss. I feel like at this point, you don't even cry over spilled milk anymore. You just allow it to penetrate, allow it to pass and process those emotions right then and there uh, if you can, you know, and uh, to endure and to look at there's always a silver line, lining, right? There's always... Well, I get the five of cups with this card. So although something has been lost, there is still so much more to gain. Okay. Let's see. What else? Let's pull some more cards. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck. What else does our pile number twos need to know right now in regards to the lessons that they're learning and overcoming, Spirit? Thank you. Okay. So just... So we have crystals healing. Yeah, I feel like you've been in a deep state of healing. If you've been feeling tired or weary or just like, what's going on with my energy levels? Why am I so depleted? I feel like it's because you've been healing. You needed to take some time out. I feel like you're a natural healer. So in turn, you have to be healed as well. You need a outlet or a conduit uh to process your own emotions and do your own healing work on the day-to-day, -day, especially if you're helping others daily, right? These two cards just fell over there, so I'm going to uncover that. We have Ornothomancy Omen, and then we have Shooting Star Confirmation. Can't make this up. Look, you're seeing signs and synchronicities, omens, so to speak, that are coming into you, that is proving to you that there is a wish coming in for you. That's about to be granted. If you've been experiencing, like I said, heightened fatigue or like not feeling like, you know, almost like stuck, I feel like, or stagnant. I want to say stagnant for some reason. There is a breakthrough coming. You have been healing, okay? And your wishes are your command, right? What you want can be made manifest, but it's just realizing like, hey, I'm such a conduit. I'm such a master manifester. I'm such a conduit of attraction that no matter what I feel or how I feel, it's going to come either way. So I might as well use this feeling state of opulence, of, of, of grandeur, of love, of kindness, of compassion, so I can attract all those things to me because they're available to me, right? And we have at the bottom of the deck, astrology destiny. This is a part of your destiny, Okay, that's coming in for you, pile number two. So I have a feeling like your faith, you maybe in the recent past, you've faced like this stagnancy that is just like, well, what now? And you've been waiting, but I don't think you've been realizing that you've actually been creating a outlet for yourself to heal, but to also manifest and refine the, your vision and the things that you want. Okay, because they're coming, they're coming in for you guys. Okay, so thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Last message of um, advice, guidance, or wisdom for our pile number twos. Advice, guidance, and wisdom for our pile number twos in regards to um, the lessons they're currently learning and overcoming right now, Spirit. One card. Advice, guidance, and wisdom for our pile number two, Spirit. One card. Okay, y'all got two cards. <laughs> Okay, so we have don't let your past hold you back, South Node, and we have conclusions are within reach, full moon eclipse. Also at the bottom of the, de the deck, your commitment is being tested, first quarter moon. So keep going. Don't let past, don't let your past hold you back. Don't let your past addictions, traumas, um, anything of that nature, relationships hold you back from where it is that you're going because you have this beautiful path ahead of you right now. And I feel like there is about to be uh, things to solidify this as well. 
And I feel like fears and anxieties from the past can come up. Like, well, what if this doesn't work? Or what if this takes a wild turn or spin? Don't worry about that. Just keep your eye on the prize and keep focused because this is why this is coming up. Your commitment is being tested. How bad do you really want this thing, right? And um, yeah, and this could come in around the next full moon or the the ne the eclipse seasons, okay? So... So yeah, pile number twos, with that being said, my dreaming dreamers, congratulations on this beautiful reading, job well done, continue to be a conduit of uh, life and passion and vitality and, you know, the things that you want in life and, you know, wish those to others, you know, because when we wish those for others, we're also in turn wishing them for ourselves and just continue on your path because you have such a beautiful uh you have such a beautiful one ahead of you, okay? So with that being said, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. If you like this reading, if it resonates with, with you, please hit that thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you, and I'll see you in our next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number three. Welcome back to your reading. So you all chose card number 28. Why do I keep saying 28th? Maybe something's coming up on in August 28th or on the 28th of the month, pile number threes. <clears throat> but I feel like I even said this during um, the intro. So that's interesting. You have card number 28, <laughs> fourth house with roots. Okay, so two and eight, you add those together, that's 10. You add one and zero together, that's one. There is, I feel like there's a new beginning coming in for you in regards to some type of generational wish fulfillment or destiny, okay? Um, this could involve something about healing the inner child within your family tree or family lineage, healing those, healing the childhood for, you know, the ancestors, your angels, your guides, you know what I'm saying? Being thrusted into this initiative period of like prosperity or something like that. But it comes from deep within. It comes from deep within the soil is what I'm getting with roots here, right? Yeah, but I want to, let's read a little bit of this card first for y'all. Card number 28. There's a new beginning though. There's a catalyst being made manifested okay so let's see we have fourth house roots card number 28 it says i love you as certain dark things are to be loved in secret between the shadow and the soul paulo neruda sonnet i think this is 17 okay 100 love sonnets it says your question may somehow be rooted in the past it says the fourth house is ruled by the moon and governs the feelings all the way uh, the feelings, all the ways we are touchy and emotional, dreams and our soul yearnings. It signifies a home, family, and the earliest phase of childhood. Of even uh, the earliest phase of childhood, excuse me, even to the time shortly before birth when we were still in the womb. It is a babe within the womb. It is a cover that protects us from the world. This house represents nurturing, giving nourishment and safety. It symbolizes mothering and motherhood and also this father who is able to mother and nurture his offspring. It says, um, let's see, uh, when this card shows up in a reading, home and family issues may have something to do with your query. Uh, and as it represents your current environment, family members and where you live, real estate and land might also figure in as in putting down roots or buying or selling a home. This card can be the predictor of a birth or new members in the family of pregnancy and can sometimes mean care for the elderly, including nursing homes and hospital stays. It says this card can also indicate the presence of angels and being directed by heavenly means. This is trippy. That's what I'm really getting. This card can also indicate the presence of angels and being directed by heavenly means. This is what's happening. And as it, re as it pertains to like, uh, it says, um, it did bring up like 
childhood, even to the time shortly before birth, when we are still in the womb, it is a babe within the womb. It is a cover that protects us from the world. This house represents nurturing, giving, nurturement, and safety. That's what really pointed out to me as well, pile number threes, is that like you're healing the safety of the inner child, not only within you, but within your family lineage and the people who you come across family lineage too. You're healing that lack of safety that they must have felt growing up and you're uh, ensuring it for the next generations as much as possible. Okay. Even if that's just emotional safety within themselves, right? Cause that's all that that's all we can really produce that from is ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I feel like you are doing a lot of profound healing work for yourself, but it's just not for yourself. It's, it's, uh, almost like the, the, the catchphrase nowadays is, um, almost like hearing generational curses of instability or the home or, you know, not feeling safe within that. Right. So this is, I could already tell this is going to be a very deep read. Okay. So let's hop straight into it. We have at the bottom of the deck, nine of swords, cruelty. Yeah. And I have a feeling this is like the, in, so the Nine of Swords in the Rider Waite Tarot typically represents uh, feelings of anxiety, but it's not, it's almost like not as self-imposed because it's, you know, it's not the Eight of Swords. It's all almost like environmental woes. You know what I'm saying? You're, you could be so sensitive uh, in regards to emotions or even energy that whatever is happening around you is penetrating you. You know what I'm saying? And therein lies the cruelty, the cruelty that you're allowing yourself to endure by maybe not taking precautions uh, by means of like spiritually protecting yourself and, you know, just maintaining um, and not to eliminate anxiety. Because sometimes I feel like anxiety is a good thing. It teaches you what to do or what you should be focusing on uh, away from that feeling state of fear or insecurity or lack you know, if those alarms are ringing in your system, they're ringing in your system for a reason, but it's not a means of panic. It's a means of, of how to proceed next, right? There you go. So that's what I'm getting. Don't, don't induce this any longer through uh, letting it ruminate, through letting it create a space in your mind. What you want to do is um, create distractions and healthy ones, right? So whatever that means to you, okay? I really hope that makes sense because you're you're healing this state in, in, in any regard, right? You're already in the motion and already in the uh, process of healing this uh, state and quailing that anxiety, not completely eliminating it because it's there for a reason, but quailing it and using it and integrating it into your life to make the things that you want to happen, happen as opposed to the things that you don't want to happen, right? <clears throat> so again, pile number threes, let's list off your cards. We have the Ten of Cups with satiety. We have the King of Swords. We have the Ten of Wands with oppression. We have the Two of Pentacles with change. We have the Queen of Swords. We have the Star, the Seven of Cups with debauch. We have the Tower. We have the Hermit. And then we have the Three of Cups with abundance. Again, pile number threes. I was saying how deep this freaking reading is because I'm getting ancestral patterns here that you, you, my friend, are healing within yourself. Thus, you're going to create a ripple effect and heal it within your, your, your family tree, within your lineage through epigenetics, right? Because if we conquer something within us, and let's say you procreate or you don't procreate, whatever it is that you're creating, whether that be people, whether that be uh, a business or a an ideal, right? Whatever it is that you're creating, that's going to permeate and that's going to um, echo in the echo in eternity, as Marcus Aurelius would say, right? And so what I'm getting with this oppression card, Ten of Wands, and the Tower is almost like there is massive change coming in the way, uh, the weight that has been held in your family or your ancestral lineage. Um, there's going to be a complete shift, a complete shifting within that, right? Uh, from the foundation upward, right? There's going to be a new building of the foundation, right? 
this is just real deep. This is just so profound, this reading, pile number threes, okay? But yeah, like you're going towards your truth and um, you're going towards it fast, okay? This oppression is going to be obliterated for lineages to come and you're you're going to feel free. And I feel like the future of your family, whether the, whether they be your own children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, whomever, right? Even the people who take over your business in the future, whatever it is that you're tending on leaving behind, right? Uh, they're going to be affected by this as well, okay? Affected by this triumph, by this growth, by this um, triumph through adversity, so to speak, right? Going back to the beginning of the reading with the Ten of Cups, Satiety, and the Star card, it's it was meant for you. Your your parents, your grandparents, your lineages wanted you to um, have what they couldn't, have what they didn't, right? And it's interesting because we have the pyramids of Egypt, and we have this beautiful like oasis near it, and then there's this mermaid who's like pouring water into the water. And healing, you could tell these are healing waters. And this is healing of family. This is the healing of family here with the star card and the ten of cups, satiety. So there could be a brighter future. There could be more connectivity within the, the lineage is what I'm getting. And that's what you're learning. And that's what you're overcoming. And that's what you're, you know, building towards, right? Um, with the ten, with the King of Swords here and uh, Seven of Cups debauch, I have a feeling like that there's going to be a lot of truth coming up about maybe addictions or addictive patterns that could have been in, tied into a family lineage that are going to be just completely like thwarted. Okay, they're going to be obliterated, eliminated. Okay, and you're running from that because you're running towards you're running towards something else. You're running towards the work. You're running towards how even challenging this could be at different times because you know you're you're going to make it. You're almost there. And it's it, it's not just because of you. It's it's a deeper purpose involved. And I feel like that's why a lot of the things that you've been drowning your sorrows in, they're going to be left behind. Or coping mechanisms that just don't they don't work. They're not working anymore, you know? With the two of pentacles change and the hermit, yeah, I feel like you're doing a deep dive. There's a deep introspection going on about, okay, what can I carry and what can I not? What helps me and what hinders me, right? And I feel like you're growing through it, right? You're growing through the process of this change. You're learning more about yourself. You're learning how to be more self-regulated in the words of my friend. You know, my friend said that. I'm like, that's such an amazing term, self-regulation. You know, you're starting to learn how to lean on um, going and doing the inner work, right? Maybe taking a soul pilgrimage somewhere as well. I'm getting a lot of sacral chakra um, healing as well here for some reason with the oranges. Okay, and with the uh, Queen of Swords and the Three of Cups abundance, I have a feeling um, you're becoming... It's almost like you're on cloud nine right now and you're looking at things objectively and you're looking at the ways in which you want to celebrate and be celebrated, pile number threes. If I'm reading this right, I kind of want to get more of a, I just feel like you're becoming this very vocal, very logical but also still fun and optimistic person, right? Through trial and error, through experience, you're becoming this like multifaceted energy with the Queen of Swords. But I do want to clarify this Queen of Swords. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Why is this Queen of Swords here? Clear, concise, accurate messages. Why is this Queen of Swords here? 
spirit. Why is this queen of swords here for our pile number threes? The world, yes, yeah, success. Okay, and that's so funny. So here's the thing. We have the nine of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. There's surefire success and completion of a cycle here, right? The three of the three of swords and the ace of pentacles came out in reverse. And I'm feeling like what I'm getting here, because we could still put them up, right? They'll still kind of, I'll still explain to you what this is, is right? I felt like pile number threes, you could have had a group of friends who you were just super close with, or a group of people, right? Who you're super close with and learned how to operate without them. Whatever has happened in the past with them, whether you know they're still your friends or they're not, or maybe you guys aren't as close as you used to be, you learn how to become more self-sufficient and look objectively towards things, right? You see how this, this person here, this queen of swords is almost like a lone wolf and you'll have people down there celebrating, but it's because this person took off their mask. They had to take off their mask. So now they're holding their mask, but they're alone. And it's like, you know what? At least I can be true to myself and who I am, even if I have to be alone. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you're on this cloud. You're on cloud nine because you have really authenticated yourself, but it left you kind of like alone. It's, it's almost like, you know, it's lonely at the top. But what I'm getting is that you're healing. You have healed through some type of deception, deceit, or heartbreak. And... uh you're realizing not to take certain things unless they're good for you, right? Not to just take it. So let's say, for example, if this was a friendship that ended, you you realize that you had to heal through adversity or things being taken away from you, like a person, like a circumstance, like an opportunity, right? But you healed through that and you got you got more life experience through that. It taught you how to maneuver uh, in your life and how to uh, celebrate yourself and your wins and celebrate with the people who also want to celebrate with you authentically, with you being yourself, you not masquerading and pretending to be like, you know, the, a person who you're not, you know, and that whatever that means, right? But there is completion, there is success, there is like, uh, integration that you have accumulated over this and and you're still very successful and independent of uh independent in and of yourself no matter who you're with or you know who you're without okay so let's see i'm actually curious i'm gonna clarify this three of cups too why is this three of cups here spirit clarify this three of cups for our pile number threes one more card thank you so yeah, we have Page of Pentacles, we have the Three of Wands, and we have the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles was in reverse. All these cards are really in reverse. This is ugh, Queen of Cups. This is this is a port a part of you as well, pile number threes. Okay. So I have a feeling you were giving your love, you're giving so much, but you weren't receiving the, in the same manner or you were being breadcrumbed. So you're like, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm just going to be myself authentically. And if that entails me being alone in this period, then so be it. And because of that, you've triumphed. You're gaining this abundance and this celebration, okay? So let's see. Let's uh, pull some more cards, my dears. Let's see. Tell us more, God. Clear, concise, accurate messages. What lessons are pile number threes learning and overcoming right now, spirit? What lessons are pile number threes learning and overcoming right now, spirit? Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. What lessons are they currently? Okay. So these cards wanted to come out, so I'm going to take them. We have the tower again, card number 16, disruption. We have card number eight, accelerated motion. And then we have card number four, boredom and discontent, discontent and boredom. Bottom of the deck, card number 21, the universe. So I feel like God's spirit has your back and you have to learn how to integrate into yourself. You have to learn how to um, integrate that shadow aspect of yourself and the persona that you show people on a daily basis. Pile number 
threes. And with that being said, you also have to learn you're not easily broken. You're not easily broken through triumph. You could hang in there and actually completely stop a tower moment or like completely stop yourself from un crumbling, right? Coming apart at the seams. I have a feeling maybe in the recent future or even in the, the you know, past future, uh, in the recent future, in the most recent past, or, you know, even a, as it pertains to a few years ago, maybe you felt like I would have crumbled at this, but you've garnered so much um, depth and wisdom through through uh, experience that you could really, you know, that you could overcome anything. Now, I feel like you could either be seeing a lot of shooting stars or have seen a lot of shooting stars in the past. And I felt like you knew what was coming deep down inside. You knew to hang on because your, your angels, ancestors, and guides were giving you those moments in time uh, to reflect back on whenever you got caught up in a story that wasn't serving you. Right. And with the four, uh, with the, with card number four here, discontent and boredom, I have a feeling like, um, you now you're looking for more. I feel like because you've, you've conquered something, maybe something that you wanted and it happened. Now you're looking for more. Now you want more. Now you've kind of set back. You're kind of isolated in this, in this meditative state, but it's like, well, I want more. I'm okay with being bored. I'm okay with being to myself. I'm okay with being alone just because I know it's, it's sharpening me, right? It's sharpening me. It's refining me. It's making me become a better, stronger person. You're seeing the different rays of light through things, right? Sorry about that pile number threes, but yeah, like you're contented. It says discontent and boredom, but I feel like you're learning how to be okay with boredom because you're realizing how much of a gift it is and how you could really be enthralled in deep work when you're bored or, you know, maybe even transmuting that boredom into something else. Right. But there's something you're holding, you're holding on, you're holding on. And I feel like it's being recommended to do that at this time. Okay. So tell me more spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages. What else does our pile number threes need to know in regards to the lessons that they're learning and overcoming right now, spirit? Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Thank you. We have lots chance. Let's see. Tell me more, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number threes. Okay. We have tea leaves foresight, and we have dictionary communication. Bottom of the deck, we have crystal ball clarity. So I feel like um, you're learning. Okay, so your angels, ancestors, and guides are directing you, right? They're directing you through your gift of foresight, right? Insight, foresight, clairvoyance, clairaudiences, you being able to see things or seeing through things as well, right? Seeing through things, right? Because we have tea leaves in a cup and we, we kind of, if you're watching this, you kind of understand that whole story of like, okay, well, let's see what message I can get through these tea leaves. So it's deciphering something, not as it just objectively appears to be, but seeing through it, right? Um, with this lots chance card, I have a feeling you're really being led right now to rest on your faculties right now, rest on yourself and taking a gamble and, uh, taking a chance on yourself, right? Even though nothing happens on this plane of existence by chance, I feel like everything is, is happening for a reason, right? 
And with dictionary communication, I feel like you're learning to become this master communicator. You're learning to use your throat chakra more. You're learning to open up right? Whether that be your heart, whether that just be being more open-minded to concepts and listening to people and hearing people out thoroughly before you interject. Um, I just have a feeling you're becoming more refined. I say refined because we have dictionary communication and, you know, as it pertains to the dictionary, it's all about learning what things mean and learning that words mean things as well, pile number threes. And I have a feeling your angels, ancestors, and guides are teaching you that on a very heightened level because you're going to be teaching it to others as well. And the chance that you're taking on your future is spot on. And I, I'm just getting to keep going because uh, there's abundance here coming in for you by realm of communication, by realm of of using your throat chakra to convey certain ideas or ideologies to people that are going to be more profound and pronounced for them, right? That's going to really help them to overcome anything that they have been through, right? In regards to the lesson that you're learning now, you're going to help because you're overcoming it now, you're going to help people overcome it in the future as well, is what I'm seeing. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for blessing, for cleansing and blessing this deck. Uh, last message for our pile number threes. Advice, guidance, and wisdom for our pile number threes and two in regards to the lesson that they're learning and overcoming right now. Clear, concise, accurate message. Confidence is your key to success. Confidence is your key to success, New Moon and Leo. Beautiful energy, pile number threes. We have... At the bottom of the deck, nothing will come of this situation, void of course, moon. So I'm going to read to you uh, confidence is your key to success. But what I'm getting is that the things that you're worried about aren't going to come to pass. So why worry about them? Maintain the focus on what you want. And that's a beautiful future. That's a beautiful life ahead of you, not just for yourself, uh, but for others. So maintain the confidence in your vision because that's what's going to get you there, okay? Assurance, right? That that uh, that sacral and that uh, solar plexus chakra belief in yourself is what's going to get you there. But give me a second. I want to read this for you. Okay. So we have um, confidence is your key to success. New moon in Leo. It says this card heralds the start of a new cycle for you. When you're going to look and feel more gorgeous, more in the spotlight, more like you have something worth showing off. I love this. It says, if you want someone's attention, this card is saying it's coming. However, this may not happen all by itself. You have to be willing to do your bit. That means being proud of who you are and what you have to offer. Think of yourself as a king or queen of the jungle and carry yourself accordingly. This card is also a great omen if you're asking about a creative project you're working on. I love that. Alternatively, it can herald good news or a new start for your children. It says, attune to the moon, make time to have fun. It says additional meanings for this card. It's time for you to show the world what you've got. Shine your light. Have some pride. Spoil yourself. You've earned it. You've turned someone's head, okay? It says the teaching. Leo is a sign of the big and brave-hearted lion of pride and showmanship and flirting. The energy around the new moon in Leo and therefore around this card, whenever you pick it, is hot and generous. I love that. The energy loves itself and so should you. If you've been too much of a wallflower, this new moon card and the Leo new moon comes as a reminder that you need to be proud of who you are. So that is gorgeous pile number three be proud of who you are show yourself off um and that's what i'm getting like you might be alone from the pack right now but it's because a lot of things are coming in for you now that maybe you know even people around or who are once around wouldn't even imagine for you because you've imagined it for yourself so don't worry about the things that you cannot control and don't worry at all because the things that you're worried about, they're not even going to come to pass. Nine times out of 10, they're not. 
So worry about your future, worry about how bright it is and worry about how you can start propelling yourself and how to start implementing that self-confidence within you, okay? Because I have a feeling that's what you're doing and this is what you're going to provide for lineages to come is that self-confidence, that self-esteem, right? Uh, or, or at least the foundation that uh, lineages, could co- uh, lineages to come can uh, derive their sense of uh, integrity and self from, if that makes any sense to you, pile number three. So with that being said, my lovely dreaming dreamers, I love you so much, pile number threes. Amazing job. Keep going. You're hot. You're all, all of that in a bag of chips. So know that and own that. Okay. So with that being said, my dreaming dreamers, I love you so much. If you like this reading, if it resonated with you, please give this reading a big thumbs up. Like, share, and subscribe. Share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone else who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in your next reading. Bye. Hey, pile number fours. Welcome back to your reading. So you all have chosen card number 19 with Libra I balance. Okay, so I feel like the lessons being learned and overcome, overcame right now is... um maybe that of balance or restored order or faith in something okay this could be in a partnership this could be in a collaboration um but with the libra card here this has something to do with um to me being a diplomat right overcoming diplo- uh learning diplomacy and overcoming maybe just rigidity as well um or or being too fixed okay in a certain stance or a certain outcome or a certain ideology or way of looking at life as well, okay? Um, I do want to read a little bit of this Libra card for you just to give us more consensus of what's going on in your reading. So let's let's see what's coming up here. So we have card number 19, Libra I balance. It says September 23 to October 22nd. It says, all my life, my heart has yearned for a thing I cannot name, Andre Tone. It says, don't go it alone. Linking up with a partner will serve you best. Okay. It says Libra is a sign of balance, charm, and beauty. Librans are notorious for their wit, ability to weigh and judge, as well as their appreciation for the things, for the beautiful things in life. They adore collecting striking things. That means objects and people. Librans are aesthetics, are aesthetics, aesthetics, <laughs> um, with a love of art and literature that can at times be showy and vain glorious okay um i do want to kind of cut to the chase and see what what it says when this card turns up in a reading so let's see it says when the libran card turns up it indicates you are riding the fence over something and need to make a decision soon it says uh if you do not make your decision it will be made for you the potential for you not liking the ending is high if you do not act and decide and decide soon it says this this is a favorable this is a favorable card for romance and relationships it indicates a time when relationships are turning happier and more content yeah, so it says right now everything must be fair and balanced. It's important not to sacrifice your own feelings or desire simply because you hope to avoid a conflict, right? It says it will feel as if the middle approach is the smartest one now and this is probably right, okay? I like that. So it says corresponding tarot card to pentacles. It says key ideas, merging choices, romance alliances, mutual support, and coming to a decision. So again, pile number fours, I feel like, yeah, there is a certain balance that is being restored in your life and a more decisiveness that you're taking in life right now but it's gonna be one that leaves you lighthearted and one that leaves room for you know growth and prosperity and the things that you want in life okay but you know i digress let's move on uh to your tarot cards so we have at the bottom of the deck the princess of swords you literally could be dealing with a younger libra right now or a, an air sign an aquarius or a gemini or libra those are the air signs i think it's interesting that you pulled libra i balance in the princess of swords if you're not dealing with the libra that's okay drop it if it doesn't resonate uh you could be a libra or you could have a lot of libra in your chart in your natal chart but if 
that's not the case either, then you can be embodying and invoking a lot of Libra energy right now through weighing pros and cons and, uh, you know, being like Switzerland, taking a very neutral approach to life. And uh, because something is sparking your curiosity and, and you're, you're just feeling more grounded and being curious and learning and uh, observing right now as, as well, okay? But I'm getting also flirtatious energy. There's a lot of like heavy fr flirtatious energy around, but it's just making things, you know, just a little bit more even kiltered in your life. I feel like for you guys, pile number four, is, it's probably time that you've been maybe like perusing maybe or thinking about partnership or, um, you know, just taking a leap of faith on someone or something, okay? So let's list off your cards. We have the Two of Wands with Dominion. We have the King of Wands. We have the Hierophant. We have the Seven of Cups, Debauch, with Debauch. We have Justice. Oh, man. So a lot of Libra energy here, okay? We have Justice. We have the Six of Cups with Pleasure. We have the Fool. We have Temperance with Art. We have the Three of Wands with Virtue. And then we have the Ten of Swords with Ruin. So um, going to the center of your reading with the Hierophant and the Temperance, two major arcanas, one on top of the other. So I have a feeling that you're, you're a lot more wise through trial and error, okay? You've taken your time out to heal yourself, to cool your fault, to cool and calm your fires, but you're a lot more wiser now from uh, using alchemy. I feel like you use alchemy on a daily basis, which is transmuting a not so positive situation into the best benefit for you and everyone involved, right? Uh, the traditional form of alchemy is turning base metals into gold, but we're talking about mental transmutation here. So I have a feeling you are turning a lot of SH blank T into gold right now, okay? So to speak, okay? Um, yeah, but I feel like you're being led towards a lot of uh, spiritual wisdom. You could be teaching a lot now through experience and in an artful way, in an artistic way, you could be uh, using your wisdom to teach and have not just yourself overcome certain uh, challenges or obstacles, but allowing others to do so as well through your teaching. And it could just be, I feel like your teaching is almost turning into an art form right now. And, and how beautiful and well poised you look doing these teachings also, okay? But going back to the beginning of the reading with the Two of Wands, Dominions, and the Six of Cups with pleasure, I have a feeling like you're on the right track. And I have a feeling that you are taking hold and you're planning, um, you're taking hold of your pleasures right now. I feel like you're planning to maybe even delay pleasures for some time or, you know, have them in the near future because you know that there's still a lot of work that you have to do here. Uh, almost like you want to be rewarded through the pleasures of this, but you need to be rewarded through work first, right? Through the planning and the, and the timing that it took to get here, to get to where it is that you're going, okay? You're also maybe pl planning for a lot of pleasure right now in your life, whereas um, it's almost like child, like you're you're healing some type of inner child uh, or you're doing the inner child healing work for you. And, you know, maybe you had to get to this place, right? You had to be forged through the fire to get to this place, okay? So with the King of Wands and the Fool card here, you could be dealing with a fire sign, uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, but I feel like you're just taking this new important role of leadership. You're really embodying a leadership role. You're just diving straight into it is really what I'm getting. And I feel like it's balancing you out. It's because it's who you are. You know what I'm saying? You are a leader. So by you evoking and embodying this leadership presence that, you know, things are balancing themselves out and uh, are becoming more streamlined because you're living in your purpose, right? So with the Seven of Cups debauch and we have Three of Wands virtue, I have a feeling you're just waiting for these dreams to manifest. You don't want to drown yourself in your sorrows or like your woes is me. You're just kind of idly waiting around for these manifestations or these options to appear so that you can weigh them, right? So that you can um, juggle them, so to speak, um, 
and I feel like you maybe even feel more uh, virtuous at this time because you're able to lay in wait. <clears throat> yeah, your, your your patience is being cultivated here, for sure. With this Justice card and the Ten of Swords, I have a feeling, um, again, if you were feeling like you've hit a rock bottom or that you were at some type of ruin or you just didn't have the energy to get up because the mental energy that it takes for you to get up or get going on something is just too almost like paralyzing. Um, I'm getting, you're going to fit like a lot of these mental energies are going to be lifted. Like, look at this person. This person is on a cloud and they're literally stuck. They can't get up from where they're at, but this person is levitating beyond the cloud. So I have a feeling, um, you're going to have your energy back. You're going to regain your momentum and that spark for life again, uh, through your, your curiosity, your natural curiosity is just coming back in alignment for you. Pile number fours. There has been a lot of spiritual growth and development. It's taken some time, but there is there is a lot of that here as well. Tell me more, God. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. I I do want to huh. I do want to clarify before I start with another deck. I do want to clarify this seven of cups debauch. Please clarify the seven of cups debauch for our pile number four spirit why the seven of cups ten of cups yeah oh wow pile number fours yeah look we have the ten of cups here delayed gratification that's what i'm getting delayed gratification you know what's coming in the temperance card is here too with the two of swords you're okay with being um you're not trying to go full speed ahead right now you're okay with waiting it's like your mind your thoughts are right but you're not taking it there just because you know patience is a virtue and you're delaying gratification right now. This could be with someone or something. This, like I said earlier, this could be with a project or, you know, a person. But yeah, you're de definitely delaying gratification right now. I, I like that for some reason. Okay, now let's move forward. Tell us more, God. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our power number fours. What lesson are they learning and overcoming right now, Spirit? Look at this. We have card number four, discontent and boredom. You're learning to just stay within your boredom. It's okay to be bored. Okay. Tell us more, Spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our power number fours. What lessons are they currently learning? And overcoming right now, spirit. Clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. Okay, so we have card number eight, trapped in fear, and we have card number two, intuition. You're using your intuition to get to getting you out of these self-imposed booby traps or self sabotaging moments okay just because you're bored you'll do certain things and your intuition is telling you to focus on uh, obliterating obstacles in your path instead of making more okay with card number 12 sacrifice i feel like you're gonna surrender to your intuition and ask your intuition ask that subconscious mind of yours how do i obliterate this sense of boredom or this sense of like discontent and use it to my benefit instead of my limitations, right? I feel like you're 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 just submitting to your subconscious and you're like, okay, well just you're submitting answer questions. You're submitting questions to your subconscious and your subconscious is gonna report back to you on how to do this. You could be in that current process right now. Look, smoke prayers. Your prayers are being answered. And and that's your subconscious literally telling you step by step how to obliterate these bouts of like self-sabotaging moments that maybe you might feel that you're in a cycle in. They're up, they're lifting from you right now, pile number fours. Tell me more, spirit, clear, concise, accurate messages for our pile number fours. What lessons are they learning and overcoming? 
right now. Thank you. We have Scrying Mirror Projection. And we have Shagai Fragments. I love this card. It's really beautiful uh, if you read it, if you read it out the guidebook. But what I'm getting is you're learning that your prayers are being answered and you you are no longer projecting and you're no longer allowing people to project onto you. And because you're not doing that, because you're just going forward with your ideas and growth, the pieces of the puzzle are being put back together. Uh, things are being made, made right in your life now. And, and, and the cycles that you have previously overcome, they're not going to repeat themselves. Okay. I'm taking this card in reverse because I feel like love awaits you and you're no longer fickle about what you want. You're actually co compromising, I guess. It, it, that's, I guess that's the best way I can explain it, but not in like a super, like, not in, how can I put this? You're, you're allowing room for growth, I guess, is what I really want to say with people in certain situations in your life. You're being able to hear people out. You're not being fickle. You're not being one foot in, one foot out. You're actually trying to put your all into something right now. You're caring. You're trying to be more caring, which I think is, is great. Um, you're caring about the things that care about you. Okay. And those that don't, you know, you just, you know, you might care about them, but you don't place too much emphasis on their opinions or their, you know, whatever it is that they want to share with you. If they're not reciprocal on your energy, okay? So let's get one last card for guidance and advice to conclude your reading, call number four. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit, for cleansing and blessing this deck for providing divine guidance, wisdom, and insight for our pile number fours. Last message for our pile number fours before we conclude the reading. What advice, guidance, and insight do they need? Okay, you see that? The end of a tough cycle approaches, full moon and Capricorn. And look at this. How beautiful is this? Believe in the impossible blue moon. There's something so affirming that's about to come into your life soon pile number fours um it's just gonna feel like a vindication it's gonna feel like a i told you so without you having to say it out of your mouth that's it okay there's you know just beautiful times ahead peaceful times tranquil times more stable times more um the times that you've asked for are coming, okay? So with that being said, my beautiful dreamy dreamers, that is all the time that I have left for today. Congratulations, pile number four. You definitely deserve this and have earned it every day, okay? So with that being said, I love you so much, my dreamy dreamers. If you like this reading, if it resonated with you, please hit that thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe, share this content with loved ones, family, friends, or anyone who would best benefit from the messages provided here today. Again, my dreamy dreamers, I love you so much. And until next time, I'll see you in our next reading. Bye.